In this tutorial, we are going to be creating a shader to indicate that the player is hurt. I've used this in my abandoned prosthetic reawakening project, and if you're making an FPS, maybe you could use this as well. A complete version of this project is in the description down below, but without further ado, let's begin the tutorial. To start, we create a text direct and add a noise texture. We set the noise to be seamless, as well as the text direct stretch mode to tile. I also set the width and height to 1080p. Next, we are going to add our shader material and our shader script, which I'm calling player hurt. The shader language is different to GD script and uses semicolons and brackets like in C sharp. The shader type just defines what type of shader it is, with canvas item being a 2D shader. The fragment method is the main method that defines what is being drawn within the shader. To start, we are going to be creating a uniform sampler 2D variable called texture holes and color textures. Uniform is the GD script's equivalent to export variable, and sampler 2D is an option of adding a type of 2D image. You can find the uniform variables under the shader parameters. For color texture, we are going to add a new gradient texture 1D and make it so that about three quarters of the way through, the color will be red. You can add new color points by left clicking on the gradient plane and removing them with right click. For the texture holes, we are going to be adding a new noise texture, which I've made 1080p seamless and I'm using the simplex noise type. I'm going to set the color of our shader by getting the image data with the texture keyword. This works by inserting the images we want data from as our first argument and the type of data we want it to return in our second argument. This can be a vector for, a float or other data types. In our case, we are going to be using the UV, which is a vector for. The UV describes the location of each pixel within the shader to set the color, we can use the all caps color keyword and make it equal to our vec for lowercase color variable. I've decided to just make the alpha value equal to 1.0, even though it doesn't really matter. You can see how the UV interacts with the gradient as the UX value aligns itself with the value of the gradient. The next thing we are going to do is add some holes within our shader. We start with getting the image data from the texture holes that we have as a uniform variable. After that, we just set the shader's color alpha to multiply with the texture gap's red value. And now you can see a bunch of holes within the shader. This works because a black spot is going to have a very low or no amount of red, and an alpha value of 1 multiplied by a red value of 0 is going to equal 0. So on the dark pixels, there will be a very low amount of alpha, and on the lighter pixels, a high amount of alpha. Because our texture hole noise is just a black and white image, you can use the green or blue value and get an identical effect. The next thing I want to do is create a large circle gap within the shader, so the player can still see while the shader is running at full effect. We create the circle by multiplying the alpha by the squared value of the UV minus 5. When you calculate the values of each pixel individually, you can see why the alpha value in the center is minimal, while the alpha value around the edges of the rectangle are stronger. The next thing we are going to do is create a uniform value that determines the intensity of the effect. This will be a range from 0 to 0 0.5 with a step of 0 0.01. We will use the intensity by creating an if statement which will take the color's alpha value and determine if it's less or equal to 0 0.5 subtracted by the intensity. If it is, then we will set the color's alpha to 0. Now that the intensity is done, we are going to create some movement within our shader with the uniform vec2 scroll direction. We will be getting the texture data from our texture within our text direct with the all caps texture keyword, and then setting a direction with the scroll direction multiplied by time. We are just getting the blue and red values, so this can be interpreted as a vector2. Now, in our vec4 color variable, instead of setting the color to the UV, we are going to be setting it to use the vec2 scroll variable. 
At the moment, this just causes the color of the pixels to loop through the gradient, but if we adjust the scroll to include the individual location of each pixel with the UV, we get movement. And I can change the scroll direction based on the data that I put in. But instead of the shader direction going into a single direction, we can make it move away from the center by the same method we use to create an alpha gap in the center. Now that the shader is created, we can make a basic interaction in GDScript. I've added a timer and a button. The button I've called ouch, and I've connected the pressed signal. I created an onReady variable to reference my shader material and a variable to reference the tween that we are going to use. When ouch is pressed, we are going to get the current intensity setting and increase it by 0.05. A small problem is that we need to get to 0.2 before we really see anything, so I've clamped the value for the new intensity to be from 0.2 to 0.5. After that, we set the shader's intensity level to the new intensity variable. We also start our timer and see if the tween has a value. If the tween has a value, then we kill whatever tween we have active. When the timer times out after 3 seconds, we create a tween that will set the shader's intensity property to 0.0, .0 over 5 seconds. And now you can see how when we press ouch, the intensity of the shader increases and after a little bit of time, it retracts. If you press ouch as it starts fading away, the tween is killed and the shader stays put for another 3 seconds. I'm also going to change the initial color to a dark red so it looks a bit better. If the color is the same, then it's not going to look like anything is moving, so we need to make them a bit different. Regardless, you can play around with what you want this to look like. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you liked what you watched, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more content, consider subscribing and check out my series on how to create a Vampire Survivors clone in Godot 4. It's a beginner tutorial where I not only teach you the basics of the Godot 4 engine, but I teach you how to make a fun playable demo that can easily be expanded upon and shared with friends. It's completely free, so check it out if you're interested.